So now we'll move from, from the UK to France, and we're pleased to have Mr. Stéphane Roy, who you've, you've heard from, uh, who's with the French Embassy. He is the attaché for scientific cooperation um, and higher education. So he'll give you an overview of, of some of the programs being offered through the French government. Stéphane? Thank you very much, Simon. Thank you very much, uh, everybody, to be here in the afternoon, this afternoon. Uh, you must be overwhelmed by all these opportunities, all these countries, European countries. Uh, what I would like to do in the next uh, 10 minutes is to show you the different programs we have actually to, uh, to develop the Franco-Thai collaboration and the Franco-Thai cooperation. Um, just to uh, give you an overview of why do we do that, what is the science diplomacy of France, is we know that the challenges of tomorrow, climate change, health, and so on, will have to be resolved by science and technology. But we also know that it will be impossible for us to do that by ourselves. So we are, of course, part of the European Union, and we collaborate with our European partners to develop this new technology to tackle the challenges of tomorrow. But we also rely a lot on the expertise which can, which can find outside of Europe. And so that's the main reason we developed this science diplomacy strategy with the different countries in the world. And we'll mainly focus on Thailand, but at the end I will say a few words about what we do with the rest of the world. So just to, leave, to give you an overview of, um, of France, we are indeed a strong R&D country. Uh, we are spending 45 billion euros in R&D, which is represent 2.25 percent of our GDP. We have um, uh, 63,000 students in PhD. Each year we deliver 12,000 of them and 42 percent of them are actually foreigners, meaning that we are welcoming a lot of the uh, foreigners to do the PhD in our laboratories. And we have almost 400,000 people working in R&D. Uh, 60 percent are also working in R&D in the industry. Uh, I can skip this one, but it's just showing that all this effort from the French government and the industry is actually paying in terms of uh, patent, in terms of publication, in terms of ranking, and so on. Um, and I will skip this one. Of course, we are also very proud to uh, welcome once in a while a P, uh, Nobel Prize as well as Phil Medal. The last two one are actually Jean Tirol, Nobel Prize in Economics, and um, this uh, fellow from Brazil, who is actually Franco-Brazilian, who got the Fields Medal in 2014 in, in mathematics, as you know. So, uh, and as I mentioned, we are also part of the European Union, so we participate not only in the funding of the European program, but also we participate in coordinating the programs as well as participating as member of the different programs run by the European Union. So, sorry, uh, what do we do at the French Embassy at France? Our main missions actually are to uh, promote higher education and scientific cooperation between France and Thailand to provide incentive for high quality academic and scientific exchange and to develop, to develop long-term partnership between France and Thailand. These are our three main missions in the office. And to do that, we have different tools. The first one is Campus France, which I also present here. The second one is the franco thai Scholarship Program, and I will mention a few words, but actually Kim and uh, we were actually the best ad, um, ambassador for this program. The Junior Research Fellowship Program was also presented by GB. And finally, I will talk a little bit about the franco thai Joint Research Program. All these programs are actually franco thai meaning that we collaborate with the different research agencies as well as uh, uh, Thai universities to develop these programs. Uh, the first one, Campus France, is the office which is actually doing the promotion for the higher education in France. So we do a lot of sessions, we do Campus Tour, we are indeed present at the OCSC uh, um, higher education um, uh, event which takes place in November. What we do is we provide all the information you need when you think of France as the destination to do your PhD, your master, your postdoc, or to develop actually a collaboration. We recently organized a specific session with uh, Kim and we on how to do a PhD in France. How is it difficult to do a PhD in France? We do the same session for uh, uh, how to write a motivation later. Because again, what I mentioned is the motivation later is the most important thing. And we need to think that you are going to 
uh, to whom you are going to address this motivation later. Don't use the same motivation later for US uh, university, UK university, or French university. We have different way of thinking. In that sense, we need to have actually a motivation letter which will speak to the person you want to, to, to reach. Um, the Franco Thai Scholarship Program. This is a program that we developed with the, with the Thai universities. We actually had yesterday the meeting to select the 2016 uh, uh, promotion for the Franco Thai. The, 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 the committee was composed of 15 universities of, in Thailand and research organization, president and vice president. So uh, it's based on the, um, on the quality of the student, as I mentioned before. It's based on the quality of the GPA, the university you are coming from. But of course, in what do you want to do? What, what is your main objective? What, why do you want to go abroad? We think that going abroad is a great opportunity. It's a great opportunity, opportunity in your life. It will be great to spend one to two years. We heard from the panelists earlier this afternoon that it's a way to make friends, it's a way to discover a different culture, it's a way to think differently, it's a way to, to, to have a, a different approach. But we also think that if you do that, you need to be sure that you take either the PhD or the master that does not exist in Thailand. Otherwise, you will lose part of your objective. You will only have the experience abroad. You need to be sure that what you are going to do is going to be specific. Thailand has developed a lot of excellent master program and a lot of excellent PhD program. But if you do something, is either you want to have a, a specific experience in terms of a technology or you want to have a specific master which does not exist here in Thailand. Then there is the junior research fellowship program, which I think is one of the best. It's again, um, uh, it's, it's based on the short-term stay. Uh, we heard a lot about the different stay. My, my colleagues from Austria are offering a one-month stay. We offer a two-month to six-month. We are not into competition here. We are not in competition. What we want to say is that the fellowship program is actually based on your program, on your project. What do you want to do with a specific uh, uh, laboratory in France? And it's based not only in what is your project, it, it's also based on the complementarity. What do you bring to uh, the scientist in France? Um, was very clear uh, earlier when she said that what she brought to the Institut Pasteur is her ideas that are not actually covered in France. But yes, she could use the uh, technology developed at Institut Pasteur, but without her ID, the project would not have taken place. Um, yes. And the last program we have is actually the franco thai Joint Research Program. It's also, again, franco thai meaning that we collaborate with the Office of Higher Education Commission to develop something that will not exist without the complementarity of two laboratories. So the project is at the intersection of the two laboratories. And it's a co-funding scheme, meaning that what we look at is, of course, the quality of the project, the scientific quality of the project. But we also look at the involvement of the young scientists because we think that with this project, we will give to the young scientists not only the Thai scientists going to France, but also to the French scientists coming to Thailand, the desire to continue to work with the partner. Uh, and of course, uh, I mentioned that earlier, it's also based on the complementarity between the, uh, um, the two sides. So uh, after saying that, I would like to show you a few success stories. I will not talk on the person on the right, because even if she cut her hair, you can recognize her. She's still sitting at the, at the bottom. But what I wanted to mention is it's actually a nice step. She started with the Araxes Slam, as she mentioned. She went to see the Pasteur Institute. Then she got the Franco Thai Fellowship. And what she mentioned earlier is, was not completely true. It's a competitive program. She looked like she was easy to obtain it because she said, I will come with the money. No, she came with the idea that she could get some money. But it's because of the project that she got the money. I want to be clear about this. It's a highly competitive program. But then I want to talk about Dr. Nopal. Dr. Nopal is also from Biotech. He's actually a Curie, uh, a, a, a Curie fellow right now in France. Uh, but he did his PhD in France. And after that, after a few years, after he developed his own research program, he applied a PhD, which is the franco thai Mobility Program, with CNRS. And as a result of that, CNRS was able to provide some extra money for three years to increase the mobility between the CNRS lab and the Biotech lab. So 
two years of CNRS uh, with the mobility, uh, Franco Thai mobility, three years with the, what we call the PICS, and after that, Dr. Nepal was able to apply to the Marie Curie, but he didn't go back to his lab, to, he didn't go back to his lab where he did his PhD, neither to the lab where he collaborated. He picked another lab because what was important for him is that the technology available in the new lab in Paris Sud was the technology he needed to develop his program. So this is what I want to talk about is these success stories. And of course, after doing that for many, many years, we have developed here in Thailand, uh, French scientists have developed here in Thailand, a very strong network of collaboration, which are actually very useful for the student, the PhD student, the master student, as well as the young researcher. I just want to talk about two of them. The first one is, of course, on EVR research, on uh, latex research. It's a collaboration which started a long time ago, almost 20 years ago, where they have started to work on the production of latex. And they went from the production of latex, meaning uh, the agronomy part of it, like how the trees grow, what is the importance of the soil, all the way to the material science as using the material latex as a key element for the industry of, of Thailand. And this started between uh, four laboratories, mainly CIRAD, which is the French research organization for the South, Cassette University, where they are located, the uh, Rubber Institute and Prince of Sankla University. And after that, after many years, these are now the partners. You can see that not only they have been able to include a lot of partners from Thailand, but they have also been able to include partners from France. The second example I want to give is actually the uh, Chiang Mai University with the ERD. Kim mentioned earlier the Institute uh, of uh, Development uh, for Research Development. Uh, they started the collaboration in Chiang Mai University on HIV, basically a public health approach on HIV, how to uh, stop the transmission of HIV virus between the mother and the child. And so you can see that this collaboration was done not only between Chiang Mai University, where you can see what Chiang Mai is, and all the little dots in Thailand. But with this collaboration, they have been able not only to extend that to other infectious disease, but also to raise a lot of funds, not only from funding agencies in France, but international funding agencies. So what I want to say by that is that the science diplomacy of France with Thailand is actually providing long-term partnership that will include not only the PI involved in it, but also the young scientist and the young researcher, meaning master student, PhD student. Because what we mentioned earlier is that the, ad the advice from the advisor is a key element when you want to choose a destination. So by doing that, we try to keep the, uh, the, the, the movement between France and Thailand alive and very active. Finally, I said something about the fact that this approach for Thailand is not limited to Thailand. As you can see, we have exactly the same programs all over Asia. Uh, we have programs in China, programs in Singapore, programs, and since we are talking of ASEAN, programs with Malaysia, programs with Laos and, 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 uh, and, uh, and, and Cambodia, of course, programs with Vietnam. These are the, Franco uh, the, the, the mobility programs that we, we, we do. And as a result, what we look for is long-term partnership, the way CNRS, which is the main research organization in France, is providing um, uh, in, in, in the region, all the little stars are actually joint research laboratory or res direct research laboratory or partnership, reinforced partnership between one laboratory in the country and the CNRS laboratory in France. In Thailand, we have uh, one laboratory in social science and humanities. So to conclude, I would say that just, if I go back to Thailand, uh, the three calls I mentioned, the scholarship, the fellowship, and the franco thai mobility are still running for 2016 and 2017. So the next call for the scholarship program will be, uh, I made a mistake here actually, the next call for the fellowship program will be October 2016. The next call for the scholarship program will be February 2017. And the next call for the franco thai mobility program is actually July 2016. So I will stay here until the end of the afternoon. I will be very happy to answer questions now, but you can have 
uh, my colleagues. And also, uh, please do not forget to follow us on the Facebook, uh, the Campus France Thailand Facebook, because all the information regarding our session, regarding our programs, are actually available on the, on the Franco, sorry, on the Fran Campus France Thailand Facebook. Thank you very much. Thank you, Stefan. Uh, any questions for concerning the, the Franco Thai program? Are, are people beginning to fade here, or or is everything crystal clear? I think one just to, you know just to reinforce a point that Stefan made, you know, with Dr. Jibby, Dr. Kop Mu, these are people who both began with a, with a Franco Thai. Uh, uh, fellowship and we're able to use that really or, to, or to, to leverage off of that to then move into larger fellowships through the Marie Curie program. So it's clear that this is a great, a great opportunity to sort of begin to build your network in Europe and then to, to, to expand on that. So. And we are not exclusive. I could have given you example where actually some of the Thai scientists use the Franco Thai program to finish in Denmark, but that's okay. It's part of Europe, so we are not. <laughs> we are not. I, I, the reason I presented these two one is because each of my uh, wow. colleagues would present their own country. But I have also a very good example of somebody who used extensively the Franco Thai program and finished mm -hmm. actually in Denmark. So these are examples uh, possible too. Thanks, Stefan.